Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Everybody, it is the ramble, and the ramble goes on from now until midnight Eastern time. And we got a guest for you right now, ladies and gentlemen, friends and folks out there, and all of that. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, these comedy stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Alex. Joyous holiday season to you. I know we both love it so much. <laughs> yeah, as my father used to say, Christmas is at our throats again. <laughs> That's so, a great way to put it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he never was too fond of Christmas, you know. But then again, we're Jewish and we're not supposed to. Yeah, yeah I guess. Well, everyone has seems to have some religious... Uh, celebration about the same time of the year but it, uh... well we have passover now it, 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 let me let me let me mention here that passover is in fact a really great holiday for a special reason where you only get one gift on christmas we get eight. No, oh, okay. one for every night of passover now, admittedly, I guess in the old days, gift number one was an orange, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and gift number two, I don't know, was a piece of firewood or something. I don't know, but <laughs> because we are Jews and we are cheap, so you buy, you know, my reputation, <laughs> so, you know. Well, you know, oranges, I was reading like in the 1800s in England, and orange was, it was a very exotic present to get, because they had to ship them in and it, take it, months. It, pre it prevented scurvy, too. It prevented, oh, yes, that's, <laughs> that's my favorite disease, scurvy, a bunch yeah. of toothless British sailors. <laughs> Happy happy birthday! Here. Well, apparently, it was just one one lime could turn it around. Apparently, yeah. I heard you have scurvy. Hey, have an, uh, an orange. Does anybody get scurvy anymore? Uh, you'd have to have, uh, I guess, no vitamin C in your diet for weeks, and I guess it could. Happen. And that was that's what happened when you were on a ship. Ship people on yeah, the ships got no scurvy. Fruit, so. Because there was no place to get uh, get vitamin C unless they so they stocked up on oranges, mm -hmm. you know, or pulled into the closest island and, <laughs> and limes. <laughs> uh, uh, an orange a day will keep scurvy away. I think that was the saying at the time. <laughs> Gee, what other diseases oh, don't we have anymore? <laughs> Pardon? What, what diseases don't we have anymore? You know, you don't hear about scurvy that much, because Let's see, we wiped out. Uh, well, we don't. The current trend is not to wipe disease out. They they have to put you in a pill forever to mm -hmm. keep it at bay. So that's the way they make more money, I guess. But, I wonder if I decided, like, let's say we're having this conversation now, and I wanted to do something. Uh, Interesting. Oh, what would happen if I would like? Um, uh, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, stop all vitamin C and see if I could get scurvy. That'd be an interesting experiment. Yes. So from here on in, I won't take in any vitamin C for a month, and let's see if I get scurvy. And, but I think if you do, your teeth will fall out. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so I, I have a choice. It's your teeth or your scurvy. I don't know. Yeah, I think I your know. gums start bleeding, then the teeth fall out. God, I'm woozy today. I've been on taking this medicine. Doctors give you medicine when you get older that they mm -hmm. don't care what the results are of it. You know? They wouldn't give it to a, to a teenager because it would make him logy and, you know, whatever. But I've been taking this pill for these numb feet. And it mm -hmm. oh, it makes the rest of me numb, makes my mind numb. 
And so I, uh, you know, uh, it's it's ridiculous. So excuse me if I sound a little. Oh, Maybe it's better to live with the pain and uh, avoid the. Excuse pills. me if I sound a little scurvy. <laughs> yeah. So be a good name for a secretary, Miss Scurvy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So what are you what are you doing for the holiday season? Uh, just getting through it. I really hate this time of year. So uh, I guess I liked it when I was a kid, but it's just you know, there's an it's nothing gets done in this country. I was, someone told me between Halloween and the Super Bowl. Yeah. They get, there's parties. They said it never get elective surgery done during that time of year. Well, I'm supposed Hospitals to. I was supposed. To, I was staffed. Yeah, I was supposed to have some kind of medical test uh, for prostate um, this month, and I'm waiting till next month because I know that if I have it this month, the doctor has to read it. It's not going to be here. You know, nobody's. It's just like I'll do it next month. You know. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I've been holding off on a medical procedure for exactly that reason. That's you know? a good point. Yeah. 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 But, you know what I've been doing, which I, I used to miss uh, from your show, was I've been going through the newspaper and reading obituaries. Remember when you used to do that? Yeah, I I did it for a while. Then I stopped it. Um, uh, and my oh, somebody got mad at you, I think. Oh, somebody uh, cornered me at a party and said, you said my father's name in the obituaries. And, you know, I went, oh, my God. And I realized that, you know, well, th then what I did is I was going into the, like the, you know, the, the ones they post, the ones that people pay for, you know, mm -hmm. to say uh, names occasionally. I would say famous names and I would say those names. I did away with that part of it okay. because I said, if it hurts anybody, I don't want it to hurt anybody. So I just went for the famous people because everybody knew they died. Yeah. But you weren't making fun of the non-famous people, were you? I don't recall. Uh, I in the beginning I was. I would go oh, okay. go through the list, I could name a couple of names and whatever, you know. Uh, and I don't know, maybe make a funny joke about the name or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you know, you live and you learn. You know, I mean, uh, I I never went into show business to hurt people, you know. Right. So. Well, the the thing about reading obituaries now is. <laughs> Every paper I can find, like five five people that died that were younger than me. <laughs> oh, oh, well, you know why I did it? I did it for exactly that reason, to see what the average age of people were who were dying, mm -hmm. not realizing that, like, uh, as of December eighteenth, uh, I was. Uh, uh, I see. I'm saying that in retrospect because we're doing this earlier. Uh, I was uh, seventy nine. Yeah, yeah, the birthdays. You had the same birthday as my mother. Yeah, so I threw those uh, those averages off, you know, because you're supposed to die at what seventy seven or something like that if you're a male. It's between seventy four and seventy seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I made it to seventy nine. You know, and and I keep thinking of uh, as I talk about it, the Grim Reaper sitting over my shoulder, going, "Well, it's coming." It's pretty scary, isn't it? <laughs> it's coming. You know, I'm. It's the old joke. I'm not buying any uh, any uh, unripe bananas. <laughs> to a, a lifetime supply now is just one <laughs> of anything. <laughs> so it, uh, would you? Uh, then I looked at people that were famous that died, like fair, like Steve McQueen died at fifty. I'm just thinking. Well, if I would you trade? You, would you have died at fifty? You could have had his life. I, But you could have his life and not die at 50. I mean, there are a lot of old actors who've been around for a long time. Look at somebody like Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks is, what, 93 or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. And and Carl Reiner, his good pal, is about the same age? I think he's a couple years older. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, what if you could trade their life? I think I would, yeah. Uh, Steve mm -hmm. McQueen's, uh, I don't want to die young. I don't want to die that young. You know, but he had an amazing life. I mean, he was huge for. Yeah, he had an amazing life. Uh, I mean, what's his legacy, though? Uh, I mean, if we, th if I'm mentioning Steve McQueen now, if there's anybody psh, under the age of forty, they don't even know who the fuck he was. Probably, yeah. You know, big uh, top actor in the early '70s, I think. I think he's yeah. the biggest draw. But you know, a top actor in any one uh, time, any one time, is not necessarily 
going to have lasting impact. Uh, because his career did start to go into somewhat of a decline. Uh, and then he got, what did he get? He got cancer, I think it was. Yeah, some weird, he had a huge t- tumor in his stomach, like a 50-pound tumor. Really? They didn't, repl- they didn't uh, take it out? They, I don't know why they couldn't do that. Then he was going down to Mexico, remember? He was getting all these weird treatments down there. And- yeah, well, that's what killed him. <laughs> that's killed no, him. what killed him was not doing anything about it. You know, but uh, relying on these uh, false doctors down in Mexico. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe Trump's right about the Mexicans. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> no. Then you have people really young, like James Dean, I think it was uh, 23 or 24. Well, now a, a good friend of mine, Jack Garfine, right. who is a, was a director and a, and a, a theater director and movie director, not as many movies, a couple of movies, uh, discovered James Dean. Wow. And was the last person to see him alive. Really? Yeah, he he said goodbye to him as he got in the car and took off to go up to, uh, where was he going? He was uh, going up to some races somewhere mm-hmm. up north and died down around, what, Gilroy? Uh, and down near... Uh, Shit, it's uh, Paso Robles. Really? Yeah. 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 He was on his way to a race. Yeah. Yep. And uh, he uh, he he said goodbye to him, kissed each other on the cheek because he, he's very European, uh, Jack. And uh, the next thing he knew, he was in a screening room with Elizabeth Taylor watching the rushes from Giant. Wow. And the door opens, and somebody walks in and whispers something in uh, Elizabeth Taylor's ear, and she goes, oh, my God. And uh, it was news that uh, the James Dean had died. Here's an interesting thing I found out about James Dean. Uh, What was the sexuality of James Dean? I've heard that he may have been bi. I asked Jack about this. What it was is he he said that in my interview about him kissing him goodbye, and I said a lot of people are going to take that wrong because, uh, uh, (laughs) you know, I've always heard that James Dean, and most people have heard he was gay. And he looked at me and he said, Dean was not gay. He said, not even close to it. And uh, he couldn't remember the name of his girlfriend at the time, but he uh, he had a girlfriend at the time. He said, no, he wasn't gay at all. And I had always assumed all my life that James mm-hmm. Dean was gay. So there's another assumption gone asunder. <laughs> now, didn't you say, like, it's good that he died young because if he'd been old, he'd been, like, uh, doing some shitty lounge act in Vegas? <laughs> well, I, I, asked, I asked Jack that question. I said, I've always had a theory that if you die young, uh, you're, you 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 go into this pantheon of people who are considered um, icons. Instant legend. In other words, you know, you look at Nighthawks, that painting uh, by, what's his name? I can't remember his name now. Uh, in which all Edward these people, Hopper. Edward Hopper in the in the diner. And I, isn't James Dean one of them? No, they, they, they did a, uh, someone did a copy of that picture with D- Dean and Marilyn Monroe. Oh, it. okay. Uh, but these people were icons. Dean, to this day, from Rebel Without a Cause, that image is iconic. Marilyn, seven-year itch, iconic. Um, and yet, if these people hadn't died young, how much would they have made it in the, that iconography? Yeah. You know? And, uh, and I said... They might have wound up like McQueen. Well, I said, if James Dean were alive today, how would, would, his, would his career be like? And he said, well, he would have gone on to great stuff. Uh, now, that's only an assumption by a guy who, of course, discovered him and admired his talent. Uh, but my theory was what I said to Mark Frost, who was one of the guys with David Lynch who created uh, Twin Peaks. I said, I've always had a bet that if James Dean were alive today, he would have wound up on Twin Peaks. And they said, oh, he would have cast him at the, as the owner of the hotel. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, he immediately knew who they would have cast uh-huh. him as. Um, he said, absolutely. And I said, that's probably what would have happened to James Dean. 
you know, you would go, oh, yeah, that guy that was in Rebel Without a Cause, didn't I see him last week on Supergirl? You know, um, that, you know, but because he died, all image of him, all aging, everything about him stops at that point, and so he gets frozen in time. Yeah. And Marilyn got frozen in time. You ever see Ginger Rogers when she got older? Yeah, not good. Not good. Pretty disgusting, actually. Uh, it, you know, she kept trying with the blonde hair, but she couldn't keep the plumpness away, and it was just, it was pretty horrible, all right? I think that's what would have happened to Marilyn Monroe. If Marilyn had gotten to be 70, you go, what the fuck happened to her? Probably would have had some bad plastic surgery. <laughs> Something, yeah. And, oh, by the way, Jack was very close to Marilyn, too. That was the other person he was very close to. Uh, and, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, she was, uh, she got frozen in time about the time that her career was having problems. Okay. She, but she got frozen in time. And so now Mar Marilyn's iconic, you know, yeah. and, but if she were still around and showing up on TM, uh, Turner classic movies, uh, discussing her films and you saw her there as this plump old blonde still bleaching her hair you'd go fuck you know and why doesn't she just pack it in <laughs> you know so that that's what happens some people are fortunate to freeze themselves in time by dying that's a good way to go it doesn't do them much good but you know these people go on to keep making money every time they use her image say in a commercial which they do um, her estate makes money, yeah, and, and so her heirs make money. Uh, there are there is one agent in Hollywood who deals with nothing but dead people. <laughs> he said his clients never complain. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but what he does is he represents them. When somebody, if I want to do uh, a commercial for Gabnet and I want to use Marilyn's image in my print ad. I have to go to this guy to get Marilyn the, the, the rights to use Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. Charlie Chaplin's character to this day is is trademarked. Uh, oh, by, I imagine. By, yeah. I think it's Poppy Incorporated is the name of the company. Yeah. So, you know, um, just die young and leave a good-looking corpse, you know, and, uh, and, and the world will beat a, 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 a trail to your door, a path to your door, something like that, whatever that saying is. But uh, Then on the other hand, you've got uh, Clint Eastwood, who's, <laughs> I think he's got a new movie coming out. <laughs> yeah. He's 88. Yeah, yeah. It's called Mule, I think, in which he plays a drug mule. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, an old guy is trying to get, I don't know, money for his daughter's cancer operation or something, so he decides to be a mule for drugs. He's pretty incredible. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, just for the longevity alone is amazing. Yeah, well, they're part, you know, the fact that he can still direct the film is amazing to me. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing you have a tendency to lose as you get older is mobility. And when you're making a movie, you, you've got to have pretty good mobility in order to set up shots and to see where it's going and do this and do that. Uh, I And I give you as an example, if you want to see, now you, we think of Hitchcock as being this incredibly visual director uh, who had uh, fast movement and so on, like in the psycho shower scene and so on and so forth. Go watch his last film, Frenzy. It is so slow and plodding. And the direction is so static that you see what age does. Okay. You know, it I've never seen that one. Yeah, it does affect the director. And uh, so I think that, uh, you know, uh, even, even uh, so the Clint Eastwood can still make a film. Now, I ha I'm not a big fan of his, so I don't watch every film he makes, and he makes one about every three minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I haven't seen how his direction is, but it probably is a bit on the uh, on the on the slow side. 
Well, I know he stays in super shape and uh, always eats well, so maybe that's why he's been able to do that. Well, he's also managed to avert the Grim Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I look at a guy like Clint Eastwood and I wonder, well, you know, what is, what is his health really like? I mean, does he still have a prostate? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, what, there must have been some things medically that he had to deal with. He's, it's not like he's, what, 78? How old is he now? Not, uh, 88, rather? 88. 88. 88. 88 years old and somehow managed to avoid something like I have numb feet or, uh, you know, an enlarged prostate or whatever. So uh, I don't think he's just sitting there in 100% purely good health. He just doesn't tell you what's wrong with him. The guy could be, yeah. Uh... Is this a depressing discussion, folks? <laughs> but, but no, it's, 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 he's still working. It's, uh, it's very uplifting. Yeah, I mean, Mel Brooks was still working at that age. I mean, up to a few years ago, he was doing Broadway shows and thing, writing Broadway shows and things like that, you know? I'd heard that Mel Brooks was actually working on something now with Dana Gould. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to see Gould tomorrow. I'll find out what it was. But uh, I don't know if it was a remake of some movie or... I, I don't know. So where are you going to see yeah. Dana Gould tomorrow? He's at the punchline tomorrow. So I'm going to drop down and see him. Or something. Oh, good. Good. Say hello for me, okay? Yeah. In fact, tell him I'd like to call him sometime. Put him on the show. You know? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Just for old time's sake. For grins. You know? <laughs> He's got some kind of show on uh, IFC, doesn't he? He does. I haven't seen it yet. But Stan I something. I've got a cult following. Yeah, yeah. It's something. What's it? Yeah, something about Stan. Uh... Yeah. Um, I, it's a it's a, a show where he this guy is. I can, I don't know the show. <laughs> I didn't I didn't watch it. Don't tell him that. Okay. Well, Don't tell him that. But tell him I'd like to. Yeah, you guys should talk. It'd be see great. If you, see if you can get a number out of him. Tell him yeah, I'd I like, to, like to talk to him. And, you know, because uh, his career, I've seen his career go every which way. He got married for a while to the woman who was the head of uh, production at uh, HBO, right? Yeah, they were together quite a while. So. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, and and he's, done, he's done okay. He was, he was a writer and producer for The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. For quite a few years, um, you know, so one of the one of the Alex Bennett alumni who's gone out and done pretty well for himself, unlike a Larry yeah. Bubbles Brown. <laughs> yeah, so he made he made really good money at The Simpsons, and if you watch The Simpsons, there's like there's the credits. There must be twenty twenty producers. Yeah, and those are, they're all writers. Yeah. And I, I forget who told me that, but they said only in Hollywood would be a writer would be considered an insult. They we got to call ourselves a producer. Well, they had so many, so many producers on that show that by the end of the show, the last producer credit ran. You know, I mean, it was just like <laughs> there's a photo of my, and so and so and so and so and so and so. You know, there was a guy. What's his name? I can't remember his name now. See, I mean, that's what happens with this drug. But he was one of the uh, one of the original producers on The Simpsons, Sam Simon. Sam Simon, who uh, let a medical problem go too long. Yeah, but Sam Simon, they didn't like him. So after the first year, they dumped him. But they had to keep paying him for the next, what, 20 years, something like that? His name is still Oh, he was still, I think at the end, he was getting $50 million a year off the show. Still. $50 million? Yeah, I was crazy. Twenty or fifty is some insane amount because he was one of the original creator producers. Yeah, so he always got yeah. a hunk of it. But they didn't like him, so they dumped him. But he still had to get paid, and he still had to have his name on the credit. And he was one of the original three producers. There are three names there, and one of them is Sam Simon to right. this day. To this day, they never bought him out. They never did anything else. They just said, "We don't want to see you around here. Get out of here. We'll send you a check." And Not over the, the huge estate. Yes, and he, to his credit, he spent a lot of his money on good works. A yeah. lot of it going to animals, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So Sam Simon was really a, a, a terrific guy in a way. I don't know why they didn't want him around, but, you know, who knows why these fights go on. 
Do you know I'm looking at the clock and we got it less than a minute left? Although we could go <laughs> on like this forever. Fuck them. We'll just keep talking. Time flies when you're talking about death. <laughs> Time, yeah, time flies when you're <laughs> when you're approaching death. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm I'm sick and tired. Let, we can go a little bit over. I'm sick and tired of getting news about people dying in my life. You know, I was talking to my business manager Gary Haber the other day. He had somebody just die. He said the terrible thing about he's 82. He says the terrible thing about being 82 is how many people around you are dying. And I said, tell me about it. I'm 79. He says, ah, you're just a kid. <laughs> you know, uh, but the fact is that as you get older, part of the penalty of getting older is seeing the people around you die. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like my ex-wife, Ronnie, uh, is in the process of dying. Uh, nothing they can do about it. And she talks with me every two weeks and we're kind of following her her journey. Uh, and for somebody like myself who just fears death terribly... This has been kind of an arduous thing for me to do, uh, but I, there's some something I think very valuable about it. Like in the last episode, she took her hat off and showed that she's totally bald now from the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, but then that happened. You know, uh, what people do we know that died? I mean, uh, comedians that we knew, like Bob Schimmel and Bill Hicks and. You know, and then my friends, I have best friends. I had uh, a friend, uh, Bruce, who died, uh, uh, and and uh, um, uh, my friend, my, my boyhood friend, Roy Trumbull died. You know, my best friend in high school. I mean, it's just over and over and over again until you finally go, well, you know, it's what my mother said. When you're a kid, the biggest social event you have are birthday parties, and when you're old, they're funerals. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's terrible. Anybody you know died recently? Uh, it's been a while. I keep expecting to hear more and more, but uh, yeah, well, you'll you'll hear more and more. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, you know. Oh, in the next couple of years, there'll be a lot. You yeah. Know. Uh, you know, well, I let's hope it's not us, huh? Hope it's not us. Well, hope it's not us. Uh, uh, we won't know when it is us. So uh, that's the part that bothers me is that I won't know. You know, I'm I'm silly that way. Anyway, hey, listen, you have yourself a very happy uh, Christmas. What are you doing? I guess you got a New Year's gig, do you? I do a little uh, doing a little restaurant in Walnut Creek and. Uh I guess Carl's Jr. was already booked. So I <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's what happens when you're a comedian. I mean, for years, uh, my New Year's was holding a show somewhere. That you was know. a great show, we, we, usually the Palace of Fine Arts. Well, that was, that was uh, later on when we, find, we did the one at the Palace of Fine Arts, and uh, it was great because I lived a block away from the Palace of Fine Arts. You could walk to Arts. it. That was, yeah. So I'd walk to it, and I'd walk home, and then we'd have a party back at my place, you know. I remember the, the, first, the first New Year's show I did with you was 86, and it was down on someplace in Mountain View. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't even remember. But, uh, uh, it, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it was like for years. I People would go, what are you doing for New Year's? I'm working, you know. Mm -hmm. That was the night. To, that was that was the biggest money I made of the in the year of any show. And it's a, it's a crappy night to work, but it's a great money night. That's why everyone does it. Yeah, right. And the audiences are terrible. Terrible, yeah. The, I remember we did a, the show you had at the Palace Fine Arts one year was... Uh, you had me, Ruben, Attell, Feldman, Kameen. <laughs> we just, everyone just bombed. It was just like, because then we realized New Year's crowds are people, sometimes that's the only show, they just go out for that night for the entire year. That's the only night they go out. Yeah. Not necessarily like well, the other crowd. The, the other reason, something. the other reason why is, and we even served liquor at ours. I think, you know, we brought in a bar service. <laughs> this, oh, no, we lost him. What, 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 what is this? How would I rate this call? What? We lost him. Let me call him back. Boy, this happened the other day with, uh, with Ronnie, too. Yeah, it just hung up on you. 
Yeah, so you said you brought in a bar. Yeah, you did bring in a bar for the uh, Palace of Fine Arts. Yes, I did. And uh, uh, so people got, had the opportunity to get drunk. And and the problem is they get drunk and then they don't really laugh, you know. So Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. Anyway. There's a fine line. They, they get a little drunk, they'll laugh more, then they, they, then they just get out of control yeah. after they go over a certain... Yeah, I don't know why my Skype keeps petering out like this, but what the hell, you know, it's life. Uh, anyway, hey, listen, have yourself a happy new year. Have yourself a Merry Christmas. You too. You have a great uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, and Passover, and birthday. And we'll see you right after. Well, that's already happened when this plays. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so I'm an old codger already. Anyway, uh, stick around. We'll get another date from you. We'll see you after okay. the first of the new year. Sounds good. Larry right, Bubbles thanks. Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. And, uh, that was our good friend Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Larry, 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 have a happy New Year and a Merry Christmas and a, uh, even a happy Kwanzaa, although he's not black, but you know. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's our. Uh, that's that. Okay, we're halfway. This is a halfway point through the week. Uh, we're not going to be here next week, as you may or may not know, uh, because we're taking the week off. We'll be off until January second, at which point we shall return. Uh, but I, I want to give everybody time off, and nobody's going to listen during that period of time anyway. So, fuck it, you know. And uh, I'm getting the uh, Skype lines ready here. That's what you see me uh, doing, you know, because I, I do everything on the show. I'm the cook, the bottle washer, uh, the whole thing, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, it's time for people to call if anybody wants to call. It's not my birthday today. By the way, I've had more trouble with Skype this week. Uh, I did uh, Ronnie on uh, Tuesday, and in the middle of the conversation, it went out. Last week, I did uh, that interview with, uh, with uh, Bubbles, and the, uh, or maybe, I, when did I do that? Yeah, I did that, no, wait a minute, I did, no, excuse me. Durst was okay, Ronnie petered out on me, and Bubbles, as you heard in that interview, petered out on me, and the last night, we added a, <laughs> I tried to add a uh, 11th person to our citizen panel, and the whole thing went bleep. That was it. It's it completely dead. So uh, hopefully tonight it'll all work, and uh, I would love to uh, love to hear from you. Uh, if you don't know how to do Skype uh, or you don't know how to be a part of the citizen panel, uh, which if you don't know what a citizen panel is, stick around. You'll find out. Um but uh, all you have to do is go over to gabnet.net, and all the information there is on the right-hand side of the page. And if you feel that you're not going to be, uh, uh, you're going to miss something here, the video is on over there uh, as well. Look who's here. Uh, there he is. Phil Myers, the first one to call tonight. Oh, yeah. and the second one to call tonight is Charlene Martinez. Uh, hello, Charlene. Is she there? Is she there? Yeah, is she going to pop up? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Now we turn on your camera. We can see you. And uh, but right now, well, I, I hope I don't look too bad because I, my makeup's a mess. I had a facial. <laughs> just, just quit being vain. You can't be vain on this show. We got some of the ugliest people in the world calling this show for yes, crying out loud. I look really line. bad today. <laughs> yeah. Plus, that picture's got to oh. be thirty years old, right? What my picture? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. I see it on my computer. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I know because I don't look that good anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like what, what the newspaper columnists used to do. Rob, Richard Johansson. Do we know Richard Johansson? You do you know, now. I do when, now. When I used to have pictures of that at that yeah. age, yeah. I thought I was fat and I looked terrible and everything. Yeah. But now when I go back and look at all those pictures, I'm like, my God, there was something yeah. wrong with me because I look so much better. Richard, <laughs> Richard so Johansson. Richard, are you there, Richard? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear? Can you hear? 
can, uh, yeah, we can hear you, Richard. We can hear you, Richard. Yeah. Yeah, I... I oh, oh you know what you got? You, I actually... Wait a minute. I, you got to turn. You got to turn off the audio from your uh, from your browser. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There, sorry. there you go. Yeah, but was it, we stop hearing her talk? Oh, look who's calling. Yeah, wait a minute. Just just hold on a minute. Okay, but we're being joined by Charles Wallace, who hasn't called us in forever. Jeez. Hi, wow. Charles. Nice you there? You there, Charles? There. <laughs> There he is. Hey! Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm going to get rid of this guy. Hold on a second. Uh, because it's just not, it's not he's working. He's a newbie. Give him a break. Well, no, I but I, I yeah, just, I, guy, I, yeah. I, I can't. I, I, can you hear me? Hold on a second, uh, Charles. Uh, Charlie. Uh, Richard? He hung up. He's gone. Oh, okay, he's, he's gone. gone. What a, what a, okay. There we go. Hey, Charles, how are you? Charlie? I'm doing okay. Uh, am I on? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We haven't heard from you in a long time, and, and the no. last time we saw you, the camera wasn't as good. Uh, <laughs> you know, now we can we can see you in your full glory. How you feeling? How's your health been? Actually, I'm doing pretty good now. I had a couple bad years there health wise, but I'm doing fine now. <laughs> yeah, because you had uh, some amputations and things like that because you. Had oh some yeah. And I ruptured a couple of discs in my back. And was, oh. oh, boy. <laughs> I asked uh, Patrick about you, and he said that you'd moved and gotten married. Um, well, no, I didn't actually get married, but I did. I moved to Mesa, Arizona. So after 43 years in Texas, I'm now in Arizona. Why did huh. you, you decide to move to Arizona? Well, because she wanted to retire to Arizona. And so I followed her out here, and then we ended up breaking up last month. So I'm on my own. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say it wasn't hot enough in Texas. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> actually, second. it's a lot hotter here, but it's dry. <laughs> That's what it's I mean. Actually, more comfortable. Yeah. So wait, wait it's a minute. So, here, so, yeah. so you, uh, wait a minute. You, you, you were married, but you got you broke up. Uh, no, we never got married. I just moved out here. Oh, I see. Okay, and then she didn't come with you. Is that what happened? No, no, she. she no, I, I came with her here because her son lived here in, in, in the Phoenix area. And oh, so okay. uh, she wanted to retire here. And she retired a year ago. And so that's when we moved out here. And then uh, things just didn't work out once we got out here. Wow. How long had you been going with each other? A year and a half. Oh, okay. So it wasn't wow. like it was a long-term thing that suddenly blew up after years and years and years. Yeah, no, uh, well, I don't know. It was a year and a half long term. <laughs> uh, by today's standards, absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. yes, Charlene. No, um, is this the guy that used to do softball and all that? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. In fact, I thought he was Charlie. Yeah. 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 When I got oh, into it. I thought you called him Richard, but maybe no, I, I just, just called him. Guy. That was the other guy. That was the other guy. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. okay. Pay it's attention. Charlie, Pay attention, Charlene. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to players. Softball. You still doing the softball thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I'm glad mm. you decided to call because we've missed you. You yeah. were always yeah. a nice <laughs> contributor to, to the serious, show, right? Huh? Oh, back yeah, back to the serious yeah, days. The serious yeah. days, right? Yeah. Wait a minute, did I work at Serious at any? Oh yes, I did. <laughs> didn't I? Serious XM, yeah. Yeah, it's been so That's long. That's how now. I found you was on Serious XM. You know, it's been almost six years. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, the stock is about the same as when I left. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so, anyway, so, but your health is good now. It looks like your health is good. If it isn't, yeah, you're, the, looks be good. you're yeah. the best looking corpse I've seen. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm uh, actually I'm probably in the best shape I've been in my whole life since I've been. Exercising pretty regularly. <laughs> there, there's a, there's, there's a, 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 Jeff's a, a, wife. A, the wife, yeah. Huh? <laughs> there's Jeff's wife sneaking behind them. Uh, she's a lovely woman, by the way, Jeff. See. I know she's got a beautiful orange blaze around. She's yeah, but she's just, she's, she's also just very, very nice. She's uh, very, she's terrific. Um, you can call her Pam. Uh, we can just call her Pam. Yeah. She'd have to be nice for Jeff to be married to her. He's a good guy too. Yeah, oh, boy. 
Yeah. 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 We're the ones. You know, Alex. What? Can I, can I ask, what are you and uh, Marjorie going to okay. do? Because, you know, her, she's still mending her knee, right? Yeah. Like, are, are you guys just going to have to take it easy or are you going to go visiting well, or something? Well, tonight we went, she took me out to dinner for the dinner we didn't have last night. And uh, we walked <laughs> like uh, two and a half, three blocks, you know, and it mm -hmm. was fine. Uh, she, I just had to walk slowly, you know, because she wasn't, mm -hmm. you know. But, no, she's she's on the mend. She's finally, I, I can say that every day it seems to get better and better and better. Okay, where before yeah, it, was, glad. it was better by measures. I don't know if you know what happened, Charlie, but uh, uh, Marjorie, my wife, uh, was tripped by a tourist and fell to the pavement and broke her knee. Yeah, I heard this. He broke her knee. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, but it's 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 not an easy mend. But she's back to work, and you know she goes and gets her hair done and her nails done and all the things that she's got to do. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, but it. Let's put it this way: if she was, if she had a leg amputated, and it had just been amputated, <laughs> she'd still go get her hair done. You know. Then she's like me. because yeah. I would do that too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Even if I had no toes, I'd have a pedicure, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Very good. I wouldn't say that in front of Charlie, but, you know. I, know. <laughs> I, mean, oh, no, I knew if I said is that, he's going to have a sense of humor. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember poor Charlie, yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't lose them all. You only uh, lost, what, one or two? Six. Six? Yeah. On oh, one Charlie. foot? You know, okay. my husband doesn't believe that diabetes can lead to that. Oh, he God. won't oh, take he Good. won't do anything to keep it he's diabetic, really bad, type two. Mm -hmm. And I keep telling him that stuff. You should talk to him and let him he doesn't believe it, but I said I don't care. You yeah. don't want to take care of your health, what can I do? Right? I'll show him a picture of my feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pam, uh, what, what's her name uh, that, that passed away? Uh, no, the not night? Pam Dauber. No, that not was, Pam Dauber. Uh, right. the, uh, uh, um, Lorraine, uh, no, La he's got me yeah. doing it now. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall? Penny Marshall. Penny yeah. Marshall. Yeah. That was due to complications diabetes. with diabetes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it it really ravishes you. Uh, you know, I've got ravishes uh, you. Diabetes. Wait a minute, ravishes you? That would be a good thing. <laughs> oh well, uh, ravages. Oh, there Ravage, you go. Ravages. There you go, Phil. <laughs> All right, Phil. Phil speaks uh, seven different enough. languages. Yeah. Next, he's going to uh, learn yeah. English. You just got to figure it out. You know, I give you a little space to think. Phil's like that guy that used to be on the Dean Martin show. Uh, uh, oh, the, Norm the drunk Crosby. guy that got all the words. No, not the no, drunk guy. No, no the Norm guy Crosby. that always used to come on, the Ita Italian guy, or I think he was Italian. Norm Crosby. Who always got all the words. Norm Crosby. There you yeah, go. Oh, oh, Norm Crosby. I loved him. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah. he, he did malaprop, the what they call malapropisms. Malapropisms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in right. which you mispronounce every word, which is... Pretty much, I'm surprised we can even understand what Phil says. <laughs> yeah, because well, if he has a choice, a right wing bent. If he cho has a choice between two words, he will pick the wrong one. Absolutely, <laughs> but I know what they mean. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, um, well, sometimes diabetes just you know has minor complications. Other times, it has complications like uh, Charlie had. And and uh, I got to tell you, it, uh, it in other cases it can kill you, like with yep. you know with uh, what's her name Penny Marshall. So yeah. you know, what Charlie's not do? Charlie's not overweight or or anything. Yeah. You know, no, I've never really been overweight. So yeah. how did you how did you get it? Because usually usually uh, we, both my parents had it, so it was in my genes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was just genetic. Mm -hmm. Wow, because usually you, I'm sure you try to control it, Charlie. Right? Oh yeah, my like, blood I mean, sugar is excellent. Mm -hmm. My A1C is 5.4. So uh, you're no longer a diabetic at 5.4, or is no, it? No, I'm you're diabetic. On insulin, you're on insulin. <laughs> I'm 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 on metformin. Oh, well, I'm on metformin, yeah. and me too. Mine, <laughs> mine is between six yeah, two and you know six something? seven. Can we get somebody to call this program who's well? <laughs> um, uh, it if they were well, right. they would. It almost seems like I'm a doctor, and this is my waiting room. You know, right. uh, there's there's Jeff. He has uh, what? What do you have? I'm, in you? You, I'm you, healthy, but you're healthy, but you but you you have pacemakers in you and stuff like that. Yes. You know, 
Oh yeah, you're our uh, yeah. our yeah. yeah. Yeah, six million dollar man. Have, yeah, like I said something. To, I said this to my wife today. I says, she goes, well, how many how many valves have you had replaced? And I said four. Wow. So, so that's how many are there? There are only four. I think. Well, we all. Everybody has four valves in your That's what I thought. I thought right. so. You had them all replaced. But aortic I had valve. the aortic valve that oh, okay. I call the first one, which was the one that my mother gave me. Uh -huh. Okay, I was born with one. Then I had a mechanical valve when I was like thirty years old. Wow! And That's then cool. I had a, a porcine valve. That, that would which be a is big, big valve. valve. Too, didn't you? Yeah, you had a and then after that, uh, I had a cow valve put on top. Really? Not a joke. Yeah, so, a cow valve? More cow so valve. A cow and a pig valve yeah. in parallel. Yeah. More, ca more cow there. valve. <laughs> more cow valve. Um, <laughs> four legs good, two legs bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. all I've got, is, all I've, all I've got is the numb feet. And by the way, it's not from diabetes because that's been checked. It's just, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's neuropathy. You know, Alex, I was looking into my numb feet like you, and it could be now that I have uh, like some sort of arthritis or something. And I'm, I'm, you know, I have to do through all this physical therapy, and then I might have to get an MRI, and I don't know. Eventually, they'll diagnose. Mine's from something. a compressed nerve in my back. So that's what they said—a small compressed nerve or something. It, it, folks, if you're just tuning in now and you happen to be I a know. youngster, it, go somewhere it's the medical else. Hour. You know, hey, your your Larry Bubbles Brown interview was about death. And <laughs> now you've progressed into health. Well, whenever we do an interview, reasonable progression. But when we ever we do an interview with with uh, Bubs, Larry. it's it's uh, you know it's uh, about uh, death and destruction and how horrible you, things can be for people. You know, when we were young, we were talking about what kind of cars we had. Yeah, or how no, or hey, or uh, women. It, it, yeah, when you man. were young. Of, when you were young, a valve job meant something completely different. <laughs> That's right. Here, here's something yeah. that you uh, got mechanical I, or hydraulic I, I, lifters. I, I've suddenly <laughs> realized that there are lots of different terms that go out of out of uh, uh, what do you call it? Out of uh, out of the language. Fashion. And as you get older, uh, I'll give you one you don't get that you're probably not going to say at 79 years old. I'd fuck that. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, you're lucky to have what you got. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's only good for pissing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, what was it? Uh, what was it? The, my favorite year, and Peter O'Toole's using the ladies' room to take a leak, and Selma um, Diamond walks in and goes. Uh, this is for ladies. He says, so is this, but occasionally I have to pass water through it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that movie. Oh, it's a great movie. Back. It's a great movie. It was based yeah. on a true story. They don't, they, in mm -hmm. these days, they don't, they make sure you know it's based on a true story, but it was uh, when uh, Mel Brooks was working for your show of shows and they made right. him babysit Errol Flynn. And so if you look at that film, he didn't direct it. He didn't write it, it says, but it is a Brooks film. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a great movie, you know. It's, um, if you've never seen it, put Peter O'Toole and uh, Peter O'Toole. That's all you got to You know, say. Alex, have you seen that movie Vice? No, I'll tell you what happened. Today I finally got my password and all of that. So that oh. I can watch all you the get, nominated films on, on yeah, you get them Vice. all free. Like so, yeah. I have Vice sitting there. I have Mary Queen of Scots sitting there. The favorite, their favorite, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 Black Panther, Mary Poppins Returns, a uh, uh, whole bunch of. Uh, oh, you're gonna be binge watching all of those. What well, about you, know what stars I, you, know, you know what Did I try to do? I have a stars born. I have, uh, oh, but I've already yet. seen. I've already seen that. We went to the theater and saw that. Uh, also, uh, Crazy Rich Asians. 
Uh, I'm trying to remember the couple of other films I'm not even remembering. Of course, Klansman, which I've seen already. Uh, but uh, basically what I do with these films is she wants to watch them all immediately. You know, uh, I want to watch The Favorite. I want to watch this. I want to watch that. Uh, oh, that M Melissa McCarthy film, which is supposed to be very good. Uh, yeah, it's a serious role for her life, yeah. right? Uh, but um, w I, um, uh, I told her, you know, we, we shouldn't watch these all in one day. You know, we've got a month before the nominations are in, supposed to be in. The votes are supposed to be in. Oh, yeah, and so let's well. just yeah. enjoy these things and parcel them out, you know. Let's not watch them all in one night and then say we have nothing left to watch. You know, so... Um, you I saw a clip tonight that Macaulay Culkin uh, re re reprised his role in uh, Home Alone. Oh no! Where, where? Yeah, there's another movie out with Macaulay Culkin. With him in, at the uh, stage now, because he's yeah, with now. him and with Google. Everything is with the Google oh, um, oh. Uh, ordering food and you know him home alone with the Google. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, assistant. Assistant. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh, but anyway, so I got those today, and then I then they'll they'll send be sending some hard DVDs as well of a couple of things that we're not getting that way, and um, uh, but I had to I had to get a hold of them because I could uh, because they didn't send me the announcement. I it, they sent it to Shecky, so that's how I got it. But they didn't send me the announcement that these things were now available. But I went online, signed up for it, and got them. So. Apparently, yeah, you're sad, I right? should, yeah, I should have gotten the uh, the email, but I didn't. So, uh, but I I wrote them and they sent me uh, my passwords and things like that. So, uh, it's it's, it's, it's a that. screening <laughs> program that's on my uh, on my. Uh, the only thing they do it for is uh, um, uh, uh, Apple TV, and there's an app. And then you fill all the stuff out in the app and the password and so on, and then all the films come up and you can watch them. So oh, no, so they don't no send more them CDs. Copies, right? uh, there are no DVDs. They do send DVDs too. There will be a bunch of DVDs that will come out. Let me see here. Where did I did I have a list of those uh, those films? Uh, I, uh, I'm I, dying to see Dean Stockwell do George W. Bush because Dean to me Stockwell? he looks like he does a good Dean, job. Dean Stockwell. No, Dean, did I say Dean I meant Stockwell Dean, uh, is dead? Or, no, yeah. there's another guy that I like. That'd be Sam a great Rockwell. film. I'm sorry, I meant Sam Rockwell. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know who Dean Stockwell is too, though. I shouldn't. I'm getting old, Alex. You see. Yeah. <laughs> John Rockwell is playing George. W. John w. Rockwell. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw him like doing it. I can't. Uh, I think Cheney is. He's probably going to do an amazing Cheney. They say too that it's almost like. He is Cheney, right, or something? I guess. Wait a minute. Where, where is it? I, I, I had it here. I guess he was trying to make it so real he went out and shot his neighbor, you know. <laughs> I should have called him Dean. Uh, what's his name? The guy that uh, paints the pictures. The, <laughs> the Saturday Morning Post or whatever. Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell, right? <laughs> then I know I'm really getting old. It's terrible. I swear I'm getting old because these things happen to me even more now. <laughs> That I get my oh, things all are. screwed here up. Are. Here, here are the films. Let me see here. Uh, motion pictures and getting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Beautiful Boy, Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody. Can you ever forgive me? The favorite, Vice, uh, The Wife, uh, and uh, let me see here. There's also. Uh, let me just go to the. Uh, let me go to the site here. Uh, What's the wife? Hmm? The wife. I think I've heard what it is, but I forget. And a lot of people say they like Bohemian Rhapsody, that it's great. And then I, I read reviews that they say it got it all wrong and it was not right, you know. Yeah. And somebody said that if you really like to go to a movie and you want to sing, which I'd probably be trying to do that, but my singing uh, voice is shy. Yeah. But okay, on, I try on, to sing along. On, on uh, digital, uh, online, I get Stars Born, Critch. Rich Crazy Asians, which I've already seen. A Quiet Place, Beautiful Boy, Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, Can You Ever Forgive Me, The Favorite, Green Book, Mary Poppins, and Mary Queen of Scots. 
and mm -hmm. uh, and so that's the uh, that's that that's the digital streaming. Then they're going to send us out uh, DVDs. Some of them are the things we'll already have. Beautiful Boy, Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, Can You Ever Forgive Me, The Favorite, Vice, and The Wife. The thing I like about getting the DVDs is they'll, they'll last forever, whereas with the digital, as soon as, I'm, as soon as they're through with the nominations, they disappear. So. You can't see it another time, right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, but you know, it, 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 I, this year I was a lot, I was smarter because what I did is in the past, who's talking? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's my wife and her sister. No, but, but what I've done in the past, we've gone and see all these movies and uh, then all of a sudden we get them. And, you know, so a, a very few of them have I seen. And I'm happy about that. We've been very careful about that. So, mm -hmm. anyway, that's. I, hmm? I thought you would have run right out and seen, uh, uh, taken a look at that Mary Poppins Poppins remake. You know, <laughs> it isn't out till Friday. Uh. <laughs> but I don't. Well, you're not online. In fact, they're not putting it online. <laughs> they're not putting it online until uh, till Friday. No, the online I was talking about no. was standing out in front of the theater waiting for. Well, it I'm to, looking uh, for. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, he's a big Mary Poppins fan. Yeah, you know. is it a musical? Uh, I hope so. Yes. Oh, definitely. Also, all, all, also, I, I would like mm -hmm. to say uh, I saw Black Panther, but the picture was so dark in the theater that oh. you couldn't see it. Was it. black. <laughs> well, no way. It, it, okay, so there were black people in it. No, 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 nothing to do with the people. It was black. But black Panther. The, How are you going to see it? Oh, oh, it wasn't called Dark So You Can't See It, Panther. Uh, and uh, it was, I mean, it was horrible. They didn't, weren't pouring enough light on the screen. So, you know, it'd be nice to be able to see it. Maybe you won't be able to see it on your right? screen. They, uh, then you'll know it wasn't the screen. It's yeah, just the way the movie uh, was. Yeah, yeah. You had to complain or something. Right well, you know what? It's amazing to me that people don't complain when there's bad projection. How many Alex of you have been to a movie complain. theater and the projection was terrible? At those prices, you better complain. Yeah. yeah. But I told you about that thing about the, the creature's picture, that uh, Harry oh, Potter yeah, spin-off yeah. The one thing. that won the Academy Award, right? No, it didn't. Oh. No. I thought it did. You're talking about the shape of water. I'm, yeah. talking, yeah. I'm talking about that, that film where the guy, you know, it takes oh. care of all these creatures and stuff. And okay. It, you know. But uh, anyway, um, we, we went to see that, and I tell the story. I've told it before, and I'm a 3D freak, okay? I love 3D. I loved it since I was a kid. So when I go to a theater, and all of a sudden I'm watching a movie, and I got my glasses on, and it's not in 3D, and I just paid four bucks more for the 3D showing, I want it to be in 3D. Yeah, I would walk out. So I went down to the uh, to the manager and I said, "The film's supposed to be in 3D." He says, "Let me look. Is that a 3D showing up there?" And I went, "Yeah, went, yeah that's a 3D showing." I said, "Come up and take a look." And he goes up, and of course, it isn't even a large screen. They've got a smaller size screen ratio there, and it's it's not in 3D. And he says, "Well, I can't do anything about it now." Says you want your money back? I said, Yeah, I want my money absolutely. back. Absolutely. I said, Absolutely. I said, What about all these other people? He said, Well, don't tell them. <laughs> and they're and they're all sitting there in the theater with their glasses on, thinking they're what? watching what a three D movie. <laughs> and I I of all it was a sell out crowd. I of all the people in the theater was the only one who complained. They didn't Unreal. even notice. You were oh. the only one that noticed. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. good. You paid four extra bucks to see the same thing you'd see for four extra for four less dollars. I mean, geez, I don't. Almighty. I don't like three D because I got to wear glasses. So you got to put the other glasses on top of the glasses. We don't give a it's, shit. We don't give a shit. Not though. comfortable. We don't give a shit. Hell with you. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can keep their three D movies. Yeah. But anyway, so I, I, uh, you know, so that pissed me off. 
Uh, and and uh, then uh, it, it also happened uh, with Black Panther, where I co- say to the guy, I "Take him. It's too dark." He, and he walks in, and he looks at it, and he goes, "Well, it's up there on the screen. We can see it." I said, "You don't have you don't have those 3D glasses on. They dim the picture to a certain extent." I said, "But do me a favor. Right next door, they're also playing Black Panther in 3D." It started, uh, uh, it's a few minutes ahead of this one. Let's go look. And we walk into the theater, and he looks at the screen, which is bright as hell, and says, I think you're right. I said, so, so what are you going to do? He says, don't tell anybody. Get your money back. Huh? Well, we can't money we back. can't start the movie over again. You know, that's the trouble with digital today. You can't start the movie. Well, you could, actually. But they don't. And well, because it throws off the timing on everything, probably, because all that yeah. stuff's run on, you know, all the pre-show stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, twice. At the same theater, by the way. At the uh, same theater. It's Great like, quality control. Well, I think part of the problem is I don't think there's a projectionist union anymore. Yeah, it's, 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 there's no need. Yeah, uh, but... Uh, the fact is that if there's no projectionist unit, some somebody should be overseeing how well these things are being projected. I mean, if I were a movie company, if I were uh, uh, Disney, and I knew that Black Panther was being shown that way, I'd go ape shit. So then, that's up to you to to write a note to Disney and complain. Yeah, but uh, the, it, there's been a lot of complaints about this throughout uh, um, uh, the business. That in a lot of theaters, uh, the 3D is dim because they're not throwing enough light on the screen to compensate for the fact that you're looking through these dark glasses. Mm. And uh, see, it, and, and it also affects the non-3D pictures because they're throwing less light on for that. I mean, it's it it. it, it A lot of theaters face this problem. And I talked to, who was it? I think maybe it was Scott Boddicker, who in Texas went to go see Black Panther, and he had the same problem with it being too dark. You know? So, I mean, and and I don't mean that as a joke. We know it's about about black people, you know, Mm -hmm. and, 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 and... who are more evolved than other black people. That's what I didn't like about the movie. I felt it was racist. I was, really? Yeah, I felt it was racist because, see if you agree with me on this one, Charlie, they had the attitude that why Wakanda was so great it was a bunch of black people who had evolved. Like the ones that already exist aren't good enough. <laughs> You know, it, it, you had to admire Wakanda because they were so ahead uh, uh, technically, technologically. It would have been nice yeah. had they said these people live in the middle of the jungle and have a higher level of civilization, which was the case with a lot of tribes in the middle of the jungle. But instead, no, it's got they got to have monorails. Otherwise, they're not <laughs> worthy as a black race. Do I, do I make sense here, Charlie? Tell me where I'm full of shit. Yeah, I can see where you're, where you're coming from there, yeah. Yeah. So that's what bothered me about the movie. Um, anyway, so so what's what's new in the news? Anything today? Uh, uh, Other than Penny Marshall dying, right? That was, well, that was yesterday. Days, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. She's already, you know, she's already being prepared for burial. So, you know, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But no, there was there was a, a story today. There were a couple of stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, one uh, was about, uh, and I'm trying to remember what it was now. Uh, they found Donald Trump's signature. Oh yes, that was on it. on Trump Tower, Moscow, where first he claimed he had no business with the Russians. Then he claimed that he never signed anything. And today they found his signature on a document. And Rudy Giuliani made a, put his foot in his mouth again, too, regarding that. Something like, well, I don't think I remember saying that, but if I did, what I meant is, and he, he made up some I, I, bullshit. He made an excuse. He said, uh, when, when you sign a letter, you sign your name. Well, this was more than a letter. It was a letter of intent. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard they found uh, Trump's signature in the Lascaux cave drawings. 
Yes, you know? right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. But um, the- I saw a picture of it. I saw they, they actually held a photocopy of it up. The letter signed Donald that J. Trump. Signature. We all know that crazy yeah. manic <laughs> signature. Yeah. Right, right. The, the other one- thing is there's something to do with uh, Stone. That, uh, oh, yeah. There was another story about uh, Stone there. Oliver, not Oliver Stone. What's his name? Yeah, Roger Stone. Stone. Roger I, thought Stone. He, yeah. I thought he took the fifth when they interviewed him to, for everything. How could, he have, how could he have lied about anything if he took the fifth? Got to ask yourself why everybody is lying about all this Russian stuff. Why would you risk jail time? What's, what are they hiding? Yeah. You know, uh, if, you have no, if you have nothing to hide... Just tell the truth. Putin is actually Pelosi. And that, oh, the, new, the <laughs> other one has to do with now. He Trump is such a pussy that he didn't have the balls to get up in front of the country and say he was pulling out of Syria. Yeah, I heard that he was. No, no, he he did not. He wouldn't take questions. He did a White House pre-produced video, and he and he re- announced it on Twitter. And he's got everybody in his party, you know, what's his name, uh, uh, McConnell, Mitch McConnell came out and said, you know what, if Obama had done this, we'd have gone after him in a heartbeat. Everybody in his party is all upset, and rightfully and so. And on top of that, he said the, when he was running minute, that he didn't want that, to go to Syria. I, oh, wait a minute, I'm, we don't care it's, what he, he said. His, his he, mission was to get rid of ISIS. Yeah. He it, says he got rid of ISIS, and he's done. Well, that's kind of like we say we, we won the yeah. the war in Vietnam when we never did, you know. Uh, and then, we're, so we're leaving. We won, we're leaving. Yeah. You know, against, every, against the advice of everybody in his cabinet and everybody in his party. Oh, forget about that. The military is livid over this. Oh, everybody's livid over it. Yeah. So what do you have to say, because, Phil? Because so you because you're happy a, about being in another conflict? conflict? You know, he's, I mean, I'm I I love conflicts. You know, and uh, but Trump, he doesn't seem to like well, it. He obviously, didn't want to go love, into Iraq. Uh, uh, you, he didn't obviously, he didn't want to go into uh, Libya. He didn't yeah. he didn't want to go uh, into Syria. He he didn't want to be involved in I, any of I these love, things. I love I love conflict. I've been married four times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, you like being beaten. That's that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the but the thing is that that uh, um, uh, it, 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 all these people are just livid over this, saying that you know how dare you do this without consulting with somebody. He said, or I I heard that they said uh, that. Uh, in order to be in a situation like this, you can send in troops, but it's a temporary thing. If you, if the Congress wants to send in and go to war with Syria, then they have to say we want to go to war with Syria, and they'll and he'll go to war with Syria. But at this point, we're not at war with Syria. The Congress has not approved this action, and aren't you tired of these police actions? We've yeah. had them since 1953 in Korea, Vietnam. None of them were ever declared wars. If the Congress is so apt to want to go into Syria, no, then let no, them no, declare yeah, but a war. But Phil, you've got it all wrong. No, I don't have no, it. Yes, wrong. you. Wait a minute. Here's, I can't would I you agree like to find out how? You, what, 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 what were you saying? Wait a minute. What were you? What did you say? Yeah, did Charlie? you hear that, Alex? What? Uh, Charlie said. What did you say, Charlie? So, I can't believe I agree with you on something, but I agree with you on that. I'm sick of these non-declared Well, no, I, and so no, are so we all. Wait a minute. So are we up. all, Phil, but that's not the point here. The point is he made this decision. He sent it out by Twitter, okay, this so-called decision, without consulting anybody. Without and, 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 and wait a minute, without 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 investigating uh, the consequences, he didn't ask Mattis. He didn't ask, matter. Wait a minute, it does matter. We're not supposed to be there, and we weren't going Amazing. to be there. The only reason he was there was to get ISIS. He got ISIS, and he's oh done. really? Yeah, he's, he's the first t- tell that to the people who still have ISIS, uh, uh, who are stuck, or uh, um, you know, holding their town for hostage. Well, you know, uh, what about our what about our what about our allies who are there? 
what what about our allies? You mean the Russians and the Iranians? No, the, the, we're, they're not our allies. And they're the on Turks, the other side. Uh, of uh, the Turks. Yeah, they're the going to benefit the, the from Russians the, and the Iranians. The, the Turks. They're the ones that are there. They're the occupiers. They've already got the Russians already have a base there. Our they're allies. There. They've been there. Our they're, allies are shoulder to shoulder with us there. Our allies are not yes. shoulder to shoulder. Yes, we're, they we are. We we went there. To what you're saying is ice. the British are there as well as well as the French and so on. All our allies. Right. Well, hey, it doesn't sound like the French are our allies lately. You know, don't, you don't, well, you, don't, you're Macron. changing the subject, Phil. You're trying. Well, you, who said they're an Why don't you just say? Why don't you just say Matter maybe? Of, why don't you say that maybe Trump acted a little impulsively and that perhaps so. was was doing these tweets to take the heat off the fact that mm -hmm. he had to close down the Trump Foundation. Yeah. And oh, so okay. he finds whenever he's got to deflect from one thing, he creates another situation. So everybody's talking about that. And I got to tell you, the press is like a dog and a ball. And he, even if you don't have to throw the ball, they can pretend to throw the ball and they go chasing it. Do, do you but it isn't going to work because they're not going to prevent I huh? think that Trump is that Machiavellian that he's, you know, you guys say that he's. Oh, yeah, you I do. I absolutely do. Ahead, I absolutely you know? do. This is a guy who is a pathological liar who will use anything to bolster his lies. And deflect and try to change the subject. Are you going to say he's not? He's, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you going to say? Are you going to say Phil? He's not a pathological liar. This guy has lied so often he can't remember what his lies were. I know that the fake news media is saying that he's a pathological liar, and you're good at repeating uh, the, what the fake news media I, is, what about is saying. The fake, what about the fake Justice Department that, and the hey, fake you mean CIA? Like Comey, and, 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 the, and the fake and, and, the and his fake lover. Trial. You know something? It's and interesting. The, the whole oh, world, the according to Donald Trump, yeah, the whole world, according to Donald Trump, is fake. The only thing that isn't fake is Donald Trump. Mm. Not all those people You're who are going to get out. Not all those people who. Are <laughs> he promised to drain the swamp. He's doing a pretty damn good job. Well, yeah. the swamp is coming up to the surface. All of those guys that you want to protect you know, around their, their their beef or whatever it is. No, that they all get, the all pork. the all the guys he took out of the swamp, he made it put into his administration. Yeah, that's how he drained it. He right. wanted to drain the, the swamp government. because that's where he, he was. Camp that Washington D.C. is a swamp, and there's no. nothing left. That they're all in the swamp. We haven't talked to Charlie about this uh, since he. It, I don't think we've talked to you since almost since Trump yeah. got elected. And what kind well, of before, politics, yeah. did Charlie? Have? Yeah. So Charlie. Yeah. What do you think of Trump? What I think of Trump, <laughs> I think he's a total disaster. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. And as we uh, and Charlie, see you like him, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to wish ill on anybody, but I wouldn't cry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wondered, you know, uh, we, we had an ex-president die recently in George W. Bush, who, I, you know, quite frankly, when he was president, I wasn't that hot about him. But nevertheless, uh, everybody said nice things about him because, quite frankly, they were as a as a human being, as a person, he supposedly was a very nice guy. And you know, everybody was using his death as code for how bad Trump was. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think they would have lauded him quite as greatly if we had like a great president right now. Yeah, uh, that's true. But uh, uh, if Trump died tomorrow. What do you think the reaction would be like? Do you think it would be, oh, my God, the president is dead? Or would half the country go, thank <laughs> fucking God? Yeah. <laughs> it's like opening up a Christmas present. Golf courses would lower their flags to half mast. A Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Jesus. Thank you, Baby Jesus. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <Trump's the> major. <laughs> yes. No, you know what, Alex? What I think, though, it's like, like you know, they say that he's never going to, like, be prosecuted and whatever because he's a president and he can get away with it. Because I think if he died, they'd actually probably give him respect and all that, unfortunately, because it seems that, you know, it's just like the office is what counts. Okay, but here, here, here's, the here's, here's the question. 
What in the world would they say about him that was positive? They'd have to make stuff up, but they'd probably do it or something. I mean, what, like you know, you talk about how great somebody was. He looked what great could, on a color TV. Right, right. <laughs> He doesn't yeah. even look great on a color TV because he's the he, his his skin isn't the color of anything found in nature. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he'd become like uh, this wonderful person because he was the president and he died. Nah, and no, he, no, you know, no, no, no. I, I I don't think that at all. I don't no. think that at all. Nope, they'll cover it. They'll cover it like they would cover any other president, but you're not going to get anybody lauding him because he wasn't a nice – he's not a nice guy. He's, his charity has been shut down because it was a sham. You can't even, do, picked, you can't even do something for charity that you're no, not stealing. He, pick, he picks on but everybody. But really stick it to, you know, like say really, really bad And things. today they That's were like, discussing the yeah. fact that he had the, the foundation – Pay seven dollars and fifty cents to the Boy Scouts yes. for Barons um, a membership uh, in the Boy Scouts, awesome. and they Tax and they deductible. listed that as a contribution from the foundation. How cents? fucking cheap can you be? <laughs> a man with that much money, supposedly. I don't think he has as much money as you think he has. He has right. he oh. has seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think he's all showing smoke and mirrors. Well, he was obviously stealing from this uh, from this uh, foundation. He was using the money for what for a ten thousand dollar portrait of himself to hang in Mar-a-Lago. Wow! And it wasn't a good looking <laughs> uh, portrait either. It looked terrible. Was it? Yeah. Well, so does he. So, what do you expect the portrait to look like? It was lifelike. Well, orange and yeah. Yeah, but I mean, so you guys like to go after the way somebody looks. Uh, you, you like the way to you know, go after his hair, the color of his skin. You know, you don't go after the substance. Actually, no, what have we been talking about? Trump. Okay, Trump is let a me man just say this. Sticks to let me guns. say this. He has. He had a plan. L let me he say this. Let me say this. Uh, uh, while, uh, especially while Charlie is here, yeah. I have nothing against black people. I have nothing against. Uh, Asian people who are yellow, like but I do have something against people who are orange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm definitely an orangist. Okay, you know, he he is delivered on more of his promises to his to the people that elected him than any other president in the, in the last That's two years. Not true at all. It's not true. Did at he all. close Guantanamo? No. Uh, you know, did he uh, try to get rid of Obamacare? Uh, maybe, maybe. You know, he tried. Uh, you know, uh, he he's trying to build the wall. He's he's sticking to his guns. Mexico was supposed to pay for the wall. Why yeah, yeah. Me Mexico was supposed to they pay for will, the wall. First you build the wall, then you charge the Mexicans to come over it. You know, that but it's what he said. We're not building any fucking wall. <laughs> no, he said, he, he said who's going to pay for yeah. it? And then the crowd would yell back, Mexico. Mexico. Right. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. like I said, you build it, and then they come over. How the do you feel about this? This was something that was brought up, and it's true. Yeah, that he can take a hard stand on anything he wants, but eventually, you can put money on it. He will cave in, which he's he's done now. Well, with the only wall. only for two just, weeks. The Senate the Senate just uh, passed a bill to keep the government open until after February during February. No, till mid February. All right, so he kicked and, his hand down the road. But, but, you know, but there's other said, things. No, 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 but he I caved. He caved. He said, he said to Schumer yeah. and Pelosi he was going to stand firm on this, blah, blah, blah. He caves in on would everything. You, would you rather on everything. all those employees don't have a Christmas uh, no, well, no, he, I, well, I cared. I cared about that. I cared about that. Yes, but he wasn't going to do it. His intention well, was to have it. them starve it's at Christmas time. Yeah, right. That was a great negotiation. Didn't work for him. No, it hasn't. Has it's no, not over. It's just he has beginning. No chance anymore because he's never going to get it past the Democrats. So that wall is a campaign promise. He, now he's even backed away from it being a wall. Did you see well, the latest tweet? Yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. did you hear that they're going to give Mexico four and a half billion dollars uh, uh, to uh, help with the refugee situation? 
Well, I got a feeling that he's got to deal with Mexico. They give him the four and a half billion. They build the wall. Wait a and, minute. Who's going to approve the four and a half billion? Uh, I Congress, I think. I believe that they're sending four and a half billion to Mexico to deal with the. Uh, well, I'm not going to believe. Uh, what, I'm not going to believe what you say because you've been wrong about everything this week. Not heard that. Nowhere. Uh, now, uh, let me look it up. Me either. <laughs> yeah. Well, I heard it. I, you know, I, I yeah, didn't why don't you make look at uh, Han Hannity.com com might have it. Probably, <laughs> but you know, he's not making it up. He gets it from somewhere. LauraIngram.com might have it. <laughs> yes, uh, Charlene. Your sources. Yeah, Charlene. No, like um, I saw that whole Schumer Pelosi thing. You remember when they were, you know, yes. that was so great because Schumer said to him like uh. And you're not going to, because he knows, Schumer, how he is, that he, yeah, he's going to say, like you said, will you admit that, you know, you did this and that? And But he's going to say, oh, no, no, I never did. Like Schumer said, don't turn around and say it's my fault that the government shut down. It's your fault, Mr. Trump. He said, I'll take and, the blame for it. And he, I'm standing firm and there's no way I'm going to do it. But he's going to say it was Schumer's no, fault. But no, but he, he, he caves in on everything, caves in on foreign leaders. I'm going to go right. read the riot act to China, and then he's all palsy wowsy <clears throat> with China. Right. And we yeah. have a great relationship. We have a great relationship, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the relationship we have. Yeah, we, we yeah. walk yeah. every day. Yeah. Great relationship like, with Rocket Man, yeah. too. I, uh, I, uh, I, I negotiated with the Chinese. I'm going to take two from column A and three from column B. He wanted you know what it is? something he's... like hotels in Saudi Arabia, too, right? Like with the... Yeah. That's why he's, uh, you know, in love with the, that guy that killed Khashoggi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because he wanted to do business over there. Like, yeah, the way um, Rob said, that's great, Rob, that he actually has a signature on documents that he was going to do at Trump Tower in Moscow, you said, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw this. I saw it tonight. Yep. And I, I think Charlie's got it all together. Uh, uh, while while Phil, you see, the great way to keep Phil from arguing uh, with us. Uh, I'm reading a Pew Research uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thing. Pew. Uh, <laughs> P E W. Yeah. Your, your yeah. research is pretty Pew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 let Let me bring up another little story here that was in the news. Um, Boy, my neck has been hurting from sleeping. Uh, wrong. Uh, Was that front page? The, by the way, this is just a quick story for you, though, because we were talking about Les Moonves and, you know, the uh, $120 million that he won't get from his severance package. Mm. But it turns out that he's going to wind up asking for mediation, and he's uh -huh. going to wind up suing CBS. Uh -huh. Guess who's going to pay the bill? Who? Oh. CBS. Wow. Because there was a thing in his contract that said that if there's ever wow. a problem with him getting money out of CBS or he ever he ever has to sue CBS or go into mediation with CBS, yep. CBS yeah. agrees to pay the money. And that's regardless of the of the of the circumstances. That's correct. Kind of that's correct. That wow. was part of his employment wow. contract. Now Wow. They estimate, are you ready for this, that it may cost them upwards to 40 to $50 million Ooh. for lawyers if it goes into mediation or if it goes into litigation. Mm, so so aren't, they aren't, they, aren't they better off just paying them the $120 million and letting them go home? And you oh, thought yeah, your suit so. was expensive. I thought my contract was good. <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, that, no, no, you're uh, the suit you're in. Uh, yeah, now. you yeah. thought that was expensive. Oh, yeah. your, your yeah. apartment. Yeah. Well, mine's up to like fifty five thousand dollars already. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, over 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 six years. So that's about ten thousand dollars a year. Forever. Huh? That that suit's gone on forever. Yeah. Either. And it, that was well, last time I talked yeah, to you. It's, it's uh, going on uh, to six years now. Uh, and, um, yeah, six years. Uh, but the thing is, we haven't paid rent in that time, so really we've actually been paying about $10,000 a year in rent, technically. Okay. Good deal. Yeah, good, good deal. deal. Anyway, the other story that came out today, and this was one I, you know, I, as you know, I have a presence on Facebook. Uh, I have about 5,000 
so-called friends, although we've cheapened what the term friends means. And by having that many, whenever I have a birthday, I am inundated with people who don't even know me wishing me a happy birthday. I mean, Charlie wished me a happy birthday, but I don't know. Did you do it on a messenger? Did you actually just send me a... a uh, uh, no, I actually uh, send you a happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. You so, and Marjorie and right. a bunch of guys here. Right, right. So yeah, anyway, sure. but but uh, the point is that there's the latest news is that <laughs> Facebook, while they say they're not selling data, was selling access to Netflix, and I'm yeah. trying to remember who the other company was, Um uh, maybe Google, uh, to have uh, access to all the private messages of people on Facebook. They also, they also sold that same access to that company that is in trouble in China, the uh, communications company. Uh, and uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, starts with an A. Yeah. Uh, Alibaba? Uh, no, not Alibaba. No, uh, the the phone, the phone, uh, the largest phone company in uh, China. How come the Chinese keep taking these uh, Canadian uh, businessmen hostage? Uh, is this over uh, the tariffs or something? No, we had a lot to do with that. Y yeah, but why the Canadians? Why do they take? Because we have the Canadians do it for us. Because they're polite. Because <laughs> they're polite. Uh, would you mind coming along with us? Uh, uh, you know, if we're if we're upsetting your day, please excuse us. Uh, anyway, um, but it was the, way to the well, it, it was the company that woman was with. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know that I'm not. Get, I might not just pull my account off of Facebook. You know, I was going to say, Alex. A lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, with, they've, they've gotten off Facebook because that's what's going on. They, like, know too much about you and all your business. It's, like, sick now. Like, What are you protecting? Everything. People put messages on Facebook. It's usually, hi, wave. What's happening? You that's know, not true. You that's not now? true, Phil. Phil, have how you not people heard who have? <laughs> how about people who identify every relative they have, every place they go, all kinds of information about it's, themselves? It's the web. There. Don't they expect let me, that, that let me out Let me explain something to you, Phil. Number one, the Chinese used Facebook to influence the election. All right? Oh, no, now you admit it. It what? wasn't just the Russians. It was the Chinese and a 400-pound guy in New Jersey. No, no. It was the Ru It was basically the Russians who did it. And, basically. And, and, and use Facebook. And the Iranians and the Koreans. And right. a 400-pound like guy from Jersey. Facebook. Are you through? That's Christy. That's Christy, right? Are you finished? No, he's bigger than 400. <laughs> he turned down something Trump offered him. Attorney General. Yeah. Jesus, he knows he's so bad. Now. Trump is so it, Trump General. is so such poison now that uh, that Chris mm. Christie refused lunch. Yeah. Refused Even lunch. He wouldn't stoop yeah. so low as to join the Trump administration now, right? Anyway, well, because he knows you go to prison, you, you gotta you gotta toe the line with Trump, and in that position especially, right? There's going to be that's going to be a tough position between now and the end of his term because of all the legal shit going on. Yeah. And if you don't lie, and and like Sarah Sanders does, and and tr and toe the Trump line, you don't last in the job. And if you do, you can go to prison. Well, you know, Christie knows that if he goes to prison, that food isn't going to keep him in the, I know, in, in, the in, 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 in the size that he's used to. <laughs> yeah, he'll want to take that. Anyway, that be, amazing. He had black bands. You know, we're we're, we're getting we're shape. getting thrown off the the main thing here, and the question is, I'm looking for the four and a half billion. I can't find it. Of course, you can't because it doesn't exist. Hey, now, I heard it. It was on the news. You dreamt it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't dream it. Phil, you hear things, and then when we find out what they were, they were nothing like you heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find it. The other, the other day, you, 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 you tried to think. You tried to say that Flynn was at his trial that uh, the, uh, uh, the the judge the, yeah. the yeah, judge that, admonished one, the Justice uh, Department. I, you know, I heard some. I heard some talk, and they were saying this on the radio. 
And uh, then uh, later on in the day, I heard some conservative guy coming down on the judge. And I didn't understand why, because I thought that uh, the judge had actually, uh, you know, looked into that and said, I'm not going to uh, sentence a, uh, a, a Phil, man who you had it wrong. Just you had guilty. it wrong. You heard it all right, wrong. Well, it went in this I... ear, then through Phil's brain and came out the <laughs> other side with a completely different story. Anyway, all right. the point that I'm making is is that I wonder whether, you know, I'm doing anybody a favor by maintaining my Facebook because I just think that they are involving themselves in things that completely belie the trust of their users. And the only way you're going to stop it is if people get off the platform. Yeah. And most most of the most of the world is on the platform. Well, you know, it, it's, it only hurts for 10 seconds. Uh, the, yeah. Not as many people are with it now that were with it a month ago or well, two Rob months ago. Rob was one of the first ones to uh, to, to drop it, you know, uh, and actually not a bad thing. I mean, I, 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 I stopped. I don't have the, uh, the I have Messenger on my phone, but I don't put the Facebook application on there. So if I want to look at it, I actually have to go type in Facebook uh, because I don't want to look at it that often. Well, I mean, what I may do at the very least is not close the account out, but just not put anything on it. Yeah. And yeah. and make it so that people can't post on it either, and that, that'll keep it clean. Yeah, and just keep it in play. But, I mean, I just don't I, – I think the idea of uh, – I look, I don't mind people using my data if they're giving me a service for free. But I do want them to be open about it. And tell me that if I'm going to use their service, that what I'm how I'm going to pay for it is by allowing them to access my data and the data that I put on that particular service. Um, that I that I can understand completely, but it's the fact that they haven't been transparent about it, and that this has been going on for a long time. I saw a documentary the other day on uh, I think it was on Amazon, maybe it was Amazon. Uh, and it was about this data collecting by companies. And the fact of the matter is that all of you right now, how many here, raise your hand, use Facebook? Obviously, mm -hmm. all, except for, for, uh, for uh, 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 Rob. How many here use um, uh, Google? What do you mean Google? Google, Google for what? Google, Google, Google in general. Oh, I use Google Chrome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, fine. Good. That's very good. How many here use uh, have an Android phone? Nobody. Okay. Here's the deal. With your Chrome browser and with your Amazon, if you have an Amazon Android phone, they know everywhere you've gone, everywhere you've shopped, Every, every time you've gone out, where you went, they know all that information. We and all knew wait, that, wait that was coming. No, There's we a didn't. Thing called the Newfield we, chip. No. What do you, what do we the Newfield chip? That's not what I'm talking about, Phil. It's in our phones, and it's it's what tells uh, uh, that gives that data out. You know, in 2011, Gary Vaynerchuk said. That that chip, what it does is you could be shopping in Safeway, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll it'll you'll be near the Wise Potato Chips, and mm -hmm. it'll send you, it'll send you a coupon, it'll send you a coupon buy for fifty potato. cents to buy yeah. Wise Potato Chips. <laughs> and you'll send it directly. To I've, the never phone. And, uh, I've never had that happen. I've never had that. I've never had that happen. We on, all knew it was. I coming. never had that happen on my uh -huh. phone. And who is Vaynerchuk? Who is this? <laughs> Vaynerchuk. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Is uh, is also known as Gary V. He's a uh, oh well, uh, now I know. He, okay, uh, he he's he's a very early YouTube adapter uh, that uh, owned WineLibrary.com and now he owns VaynerMedia and some of his clients are <laughs> Apple, Pepsi, uh, and so forth. And uh, in 2011, he spoke to Inc. Magazine and he he did he was the keynote speaker at their uh, conference and uh, that's where I heard. Uh, his uh, his speech about the uh, Newfield chip, and so if you Google uh, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, somebody or Gary somebody P, right now, if you're near a computer, 
uh, uh, type in new field chip. Let's see what comes up. Right. No, not you, Phil. I don't trust you. Uh, says C Phil near 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 it's, field. Oh, near field chip. Okay. New, new field China. Oh, near yeah, field. It's, it's been eight years since I heard that. Near thing. field. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I near know it. Near, I know what near field is. is. Yeah, yeah. But the fact is that uh, that you basically every move you make today, they have a record of. They know yeah. about. Yeah. And when I bought my iPhone. I didn't ask for that, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I uh, use Google Chrome, I don't want them collecting all kind of information on where I go on the internet and what I bought. I mean, you, you don't. You, it's proof enough that when you are using Google Chrome and you go to a particular website, and then you maybe you look at Amazon and you're looking at some something like hard drives or whatever. Then no matter where you go, it could be Drudge. The advertising that comes up yep. is, "Hey, here yep. are some hard drives." Yep, you, I get you that. Know, when you know when you click on when you click on that thing that says "I agree," yeah. it's in there. I never signed anything. No, every time you update your iPhone, hold on a second. Scroll, forget about my thing that says for, "I agree." Forget about my iPhone. When I use, I'm talking about Google Chrome, and I've never had to sign anything on Google Chrome that gave them the okay to do anything. It's the device, I believe. No, I, it's it not does. the device, Phil. We're not talking about the app, the Apple Terms of Endearment, or whatever that thing is that they do. I'm talking about the fact that Chrome does this to you, and it never asks your permission. Right. You, you, the only way you're going to do it is to do all incognito browsing. If you if you open up incognito browsers, they can't they can't trace you. The problem with well, that wait, 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 is, what's an incognito like browser? VPN? You can put you can put no it. no 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 no. Just open up a Google browser and then go and you can uh, when you go to let me see if I can find the exact place here. But if you go to the here, all right. Well, this is in the way. Get this out of the way. New tab, new incognito window, and you go there. the The window you you've gone incognito. Now you can browse privately, and other people who use this device won't see your activity. However, downloads and benchmarks will be uh, will be saved. Uh, it it protects cookies and site data. It's uh, now, how do you get to use it incognito again? So, I, if you need to go incognito, you you choose on the on the far right side of the uh, of the browser, all the way to the right of the the where you type www. There's a circle there, right? Click on that, and then there's an there are three options: new tab, new window, or new incognito window. Wait a minute. Uh, here, if, if I'm if I'm there, what do I do? I push on the plus. No, uh, no, it's two. There are two. At least on my browser, there are two little icons to the. You know where the little star is? Yeah. On the very end, past the star, there are two little icons on mine. The furthest one to the right, if you if you click on that, it opens up a. You can go to your bookmarks and your downloads and to more tools and settings and all that. The third thing down on mine is new tab, new windows, and new incognito window. So you hit incognito. Yeah, select incognito. And then you're and, incognito. Hmm, I, don't, I can't then, find it. Can't find it at all. Huh. I can't uh, incognito. No, I can't find it. Hmm. So what do you see all the way to the, what is the furthest thing on the right in, on your browser past the URL, where the URL is? Okay, past the URL. All the way outside okay, the URL. Okay, okay. First, there's a star. It. There's a star. Then there's yeah. a thing that says save to Facebook. Okay. Then there's an information sign that says password has access to this site. Okay. Then I have a thing for uh, Vimeo. Okay. Then, then I have uh, my Alex uh, uh, account thing. Uh, and then I have a arrow, customize and control Google Chrome. Here's another way you could do it. On the very top of your browser, 
where you got file, edit, view, history, and all that. Yeah. Click on file, the third one down, new incognito window. Uh, yes, right there. Yep. And now what happens when I go to incognito window? Open one, you'll see. Okay, let me open up one. Let me it see saves here. nothing. It oh, won't let cookies. No cookies. Yeah. Oh, I see. Cookies okay. and site data are blocked. So you won't, it's, now it's inconvenient as all get out because all the conveniences of browsers are not there anymore. Right. So you're, you're, you're there, you're in a browser, and yeah. everything is manual at that point. None of the niceties that you get right. from, you know, having your password saved and having, oh, Chrome, when you go to a website, yeah. it's always different. You, you probably wouldn't be able to go to your bank website and get, it's going to ask you, because it doesn't recognize the browser, it's going to ask you to for a PIN or, you know, that kind right, of thing. Right, right. Right. It says here, uh, you Chrome won't save the following information. Your browsing history, cookies and data, information entered in forms. Uh, your activity might still be visible to websites you visit, your employer or school, and your Internet service provider. Yeah, but you know why that is? That's because they're using a pro those, those entities are using a proxy that mm -hmm. they can look to, they might be able to look and see where you're browsing. They keep a history of every, like a lot, my company used to do that. They keep a history of every place you go. Right. So that's not good. That's still going to be visible. But the internet won't know where you are, so you won't get all those crazy pop up ads. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. That's the inf interesting information. But all I'm saying is, is that in general, most people don't realize this. But these companies know what you're doing, where you are, where you shop, where you've been. Uh, they probably even know who you're fucking, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, they can pretty much follow everything. And it used to be they just started out as, hey, I'm Facebook. You can talk with your friends, and that's it. And then somebody said, well, you know, what? we can. We got to make money out of this. How can we make yeah. money? Let's sell the data. Let's yeah. make the data available to people. Hey Kevin, how are you? All right. Tomorrow, you tomorrow you get the thing uh, put in your side, right? Shocker. Yep, yep, yep. Well, uh, you might be able to call the show tomorrow and tell us if you're pain free or not. Yeah, it'll take a couple days, but yeah, I'll probably try and call in. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I got a pain in my neck, and it's after not, after uh, uh, the last two hours I've been in, uh, at a pizza parlor with a bunch of. 13 year old girls in a band i uh i'm pretty painful right now why <laughs> why were you there with 13 year old girls oh uh, my daughter's uh band uh teacher decided to call a uh, christmas uh pizza party at the local pizza place and uh my wife she's the uh, president of the band boosters and i'm the unofficial vice president oh okay. so we went over there and we had to corral the little bastards Boy, I got a I got a pain in my neck and it isn't Phil. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> hey, has anybody heard the California news? Uh, it has nothing to do with Trump, but it has to do with those fires. Now they're blaming what is the name of your electric company? P S E and G P G and E. Pigs, PG goats, and, and yeah. extortions. And yeah, now they're I saying. Said. That's what I said. PG&E uh, didn't turn off uh, the power to these big transmission cables. And uh, it, it made the situation worse. But not only that, they're, they're being looked into for uh, failure to clear shrubbery from around their equipment and yeah, they, that kind of stuff. And they, they have spent they didn't rate. $8 million or $16 million lobbying it, it, the it, state it, of California it, it, to yes. pass some laws so the state of California won't enforce anything. Because it's worse than that, Rob. They, you know, I used to work in the pipeline industry, and the stuff that PG&E was getting away with or trying to get away with was obnoxious. They're they're uh, falsifying records on pipeline inspections and everything. It's ridiculous. So, I'll tell you, you know, something. You want to know where they? You know, you want to know where they appeared in in film lexicon is they were the bad company in Aaron Brockovich. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And with you three-headed you know, ducks. From a non-Californian who every time I hear, like, when my company, you know, uh, special rules for California around health uh, insurance and sp you see notes on things that, like, 
for California residents, this could cause cancer and all this crap that they do. They're looking the other way with these wildfires and PG&E. I think that's just so hypocritical. Well, the, the, the San Bruno explosion was a result of, uh, one of one of the biggest things that they found was that they were falsifying uh, inspection records on the pipelines. And it was going on for years. And they'd just sit on the corner and fill out forms. And they found that out. And this why, was, why this do was company, also what was going on you know, down, down in a paradise. PG&E has existed ever since, well, I got to tell you, they were around when I was born. They were yeah. always the electric company in California, at least that I knew of. And it was PG&E. And uh, I, I guess, you know, all I, all I ever knew was PG&E were the good guys, right? They supplied the electricity. So but, when you were born, they had a guy that used to go from street light to street light with a torch lighting the, <laughs> lighting the street light? Kerosene. Yeah. <laughs> the lamp light. Well, I remember when, uh, when I was working, we... we uh, we had nitrogen pipelines in the south in the Silicon Valley, and PG&E put a uh, a uh, jackhammer through one of the nitrogen pipelines in San Jose. And when we found out about it, they we basically went down there and said, "Well, what are you doing? You didn't even call us before you dug, and they're the ones that are supposed to call before you dig." And they put a a, a, a jackhammer right through the damn pipeline, and they said, "Ah, oh, well, we do this all the time." And we had to shut down the the VTA and everything for a day and a half to get. So the how do these companies, which and if, if I remember PG and E correctly, and and uh, I have no reason not to believe it, when I was growing up, they were a, a pretty respected company. How do they go from that to this? It's it was all money. They're taking too many shortcuts. Yeah, too many. And they're shortcuts. lobbying. And they're lobbying. They're spending a four. They just gave their CEO. Eight million dollars, uh-huh. and another eight million dollars to the legislature of California to to lobby to try to get laws passed that benefit them regarding all of this crap, and so sixteen million million dollar billion dollars. I forgot which. I'm not it sure which. Be billion. It could, they could have sure built which. the wall. <laughs> but I mean, it's just corruption. That you know, corruption at every level. It's the world we live in. So here we here we've got all these companies that are dealing in data, and I love how now it's just become a pain in the ass. Every time you go to a site, there's always a disclaimer about data now. Yeah, you have to okay before it'll let you continue using their their yeah. product. And I'm sorry, you know, I mean, I understand the nature of what's going on. And I understand that even if they say, you know, it was, um, uh, what's his name, the head of uh, Facebook, uh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, who got it before Congress and said, we're not using people's data. No, we're not selling people's data. That's what he said. No, they're not selling people's data. They're selling the access, access to people's to- data. He didn't say that. Interesting. See, he so- said, we don't collect data. But the, what they're doing is they enabled, for instance, Netflix to access your messages. Why? Yeah. What is it? What does Netflix need your messages for? Yeah. Right, right. You know what is? I've uh, always warned people not to use Messenger for anything. Yeah, I'm beginning to say the same thing, but it, it is simple because it's there. And if I want to yeah. talk to Phil, I just leave him a message on Messenger. He always messengers me. Uh, you know, my wife does it all the time. I said, you, when you make an initial contact and then go to text, I actually have to send Rob an email. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, he doesn't use it. Yes, Charlene. No, he uses email. Yeah, yeah. He, Alex, doesn't, yeah. he doesn't use the messenger. I know. That's why I have to email him. It's getting late, and before you leave, because I think you have me blocked on there. I can't instant message you. Happy birthday. <laughs> I, um, well, I don't know. I what I did is. It, I, after I hit 500, I erased all my birthday messages because it was there's just too much of it on there, you know. And I know I hate to wish you happy birthday because I'm like you. And I'm not saying I just I'm think ter- of how old I am every year, and then I'm getting older and older. Yeah, I, so I, I kind of hate birthdays. And I'm not saying that I'm extremely popular when I say I had 500 birthday wishes because 5,000 people got the message that I was having a birthday, mm-hmm. you know. 
forty five hundred of them are Russian bots. Actually, <laughs> actually, I think only the ones who are technically followers, which no, you know, is I about fifteen hundred and twenty. I have actual friends that I'm in touch with all over that actually do wish me the happy birthdays. You know, they're not the bots or people I don't care about. So that's why I'm upset if I ever had to leave, you know. Well, Penn Gillette, you know. Penn Gillette messaged me by Facebook, but he didn't do it on the Facebook page. He did it by a message, a message, mm -hmm. um, you know. So uh, there's some people who. And then I, I, you know, untraditionally, Bobby Slayton, my old friend Bobby Slayton, actually called me. I actually got a phone call, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. instead of a text. You know, which is what I usually get. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's um, yeah, it's a whole new world we live in. God bless it. You know, I'm so I'm so glad that I'm not a teenager growing up in this world. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. agreed. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, or a television executive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, Jeff. Yeah, I I have a friend who has a small company and. And he has um, what, what he calls beacons, and he he takes beacons and and puts them wherever you want them to go. So, f for example, uh, there's a company who's always trying to hire people, mm -hmm. and they're in Bridgeport. And so, uh, within I don't know what it is, twenty miles or no, maybe it's like three miles from yeah. your company. Anybody who's walking by there, they get a little internet message like, hey, we're looking to hire so-and-so for I've this kind of, of that. job. I've heard of that. They do that for advertising, too. Yeah, it's uh, advertising. Yeah. It's what it was. And it's a beacon. So he, and how's and it, how they does call it, it a beacon. How does it know to send a message to your you phone? You can put the beacons in all kinds of places. Yeah, but how does it, how so, does it access your phone? That's the question. It picks up your phone because you're there, and it says, "Do you want to answer this question?" That's so a what, similar you like way a that that chip I was talking about, uh, Nearfield yeah. chip. That's a similar way that it figures out you're looking at Wise Potato Chips, and it sends you a coupon. Yes, yeah. it's the same. It's the same system. So he's also doing it for when a guy who's a, a Republican or a Democrat who's advertising in in the town and the, the mayor or the governor is trying to say hey the governor is going to be here uh, speaking uh, in 23 minutes right down the street why don't you stop by and, and meet him yeah they do it in the elections we so we yeah. said so elections like on ways and things like that yeah so when you're stopped in traffic it'll pop up a, a, a little <laughs> Thing will pop up and say, "Oh, by the way, you're stuck in traffic." Uh, the near field Why don't chip. You vote on so and so. Yeah, the near field chip fell only works within. S what does it say here? Um, no, that that's to, that's another four, thing. It four does centimeters. To exchange information between. Well, phones. like I, when I there's when I, several things that it does, and it's a communications chip, and it's uh, and Apple. Uh, took it, and so if you're within a certain distance, yeah, you can it's exchange like when I want to when I want to send. But that's just wait, wait, one wait, of you the. You listen to me, you. Phil. Hey, you're telling. <laughs> I'm giving you the good information. No, I'm not going to believe you because you're always wrong. Now, oh, okay. No, what I was going to say, and then we got to get going here. But what I was going to say was that when my wife, for instance, I take a picture and she wants a picture. Uh, I simply go to the, uh, what is yeah. it? Uh, airdrop. Uh, airdrop. Airdrop. That's, and her phone comes up, and I simply send it over to her phone. That's near that's, field. That's one of the functions of a near field. Uh, the other one is? Uh, there's 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 like oh, 40, no. 40 different functions. Uh, okay. look, look it up on Wikipedia. I have it here, list. and that's what it said, four centimeters. But anyway. Uh, 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 yes, Jeff. Quickly. I was just going to say the company that I uh, that I've been talking about is called You Are Here. Okay, so you let's go look check that. it out. Hey, listen, thank you, Charlene, for calling. Same thing to Jeff Stein. Charlie, now that you don't have a person in your life, do what every other lonely person in the world does: call this program. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, please. We love having you here. You know, you, I've missed you for the longest time. I love being here. Yeah. So more, 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 more. Not once yeah, we, every we five years. 
Kevin, thank you, and good luck tomorrow with your little procedure. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good luck, Kevin. Uh, uh, Phil, Phil Meyer, thank what you. Kind of drugs Rob Alfano, thank you. And, of course, thank you to Tony, uh, who hasn't said much of anything tonight, but that's okay. Uh, we just like having his picture there. Uh, hey, the, all of you, uh, why don't you wave everybody goodbye to everybody, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon, okay? That's our citizens panel, folks. That's how she works. Very simple process, isn't it? Well, it's all because of near-field communications. No, it's whatever. Anyway, listen, uh, coming up next, the intersection with Jack Bishop uh, tomorrow night. 9.30, Damian Chaplin with the exchange, and then at, uh, let's see, long about uh, 10 o'clock tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, uh, we'll be back, and if you see her, yeah, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.